We're going to walk through these three games on Dr. Chess, starting with this one right here. I start off by just trying to open it up, seeing if there's an exchange they decide to take. Can I move the knight next? I like to go... So, like, if they didn't push this pawn, I would go here. But because the pawn got pushed, I'm going to push from this side. Uh, the idea is to try to overload one area. So now I can push this pawn out. I let the pawn take. Idea is to develop for the bishop. Okay, we push. Now we've got some pressure on the knight. Number of things we can do. We've got a bishop out there. Check. White decides to check with the queen. Now on the third game, I decide to go with the knight. Uh, but in this one, I just decide to play pressure back. Uh, creating some tempo and development. Kinside castling. Castling. Okay, now we've got pressure on the knight. Now we can do some stuff. We've got Kinside castling. A knight out there. We're going to try to get it to the middle, which we do. Number of different options here. The question, of course, is how exactly do we execute on these options? We're trying to look for either an imbalance or some type of trap here. So I decided to overload, looking to overload F2. After the pawn push here, I th thought it over. Uh, decided instead of playing here, which I guess is a reasonable option, uh, I decided to take en passant. En passant. With the idea that if uh, white took with the bishop, we have the check. Check. Okay, so now white has to come back and defend. We've got F2, but again, uh, white's got coverage on that. Uh, so we decide to overload. Okay. Now we bring out a rook to try to, to create some more pressure. White brings knight back. That's good for us because that removed a defender on F2, which was the queen. Check. Now we check. Now we're going to check with the rook. Check. And it's pretty much going to be over from there. Uh, decide to overload the rooks. White pressures takes away the queen option, which is fine. I mean, we could pull the bishop back, but an easier way is to just take with a rook. Check. And finish it off right there. Checkmate. This game was against the National Master. Uh, what I'm trying to do is deflect and try to open it up. It doesn't... He allows me to take. Okay, I take again. Uh, the downside with taking a bunch with a pawn is now that the bishop is developed. So we got to be careful with that pawn in the middle. Uh, the good news is, I mean, we've got some pawns, but that we don't have as many developed pieces here. So that that's the downside. Uh, we got to be careful with the dark square bishop uh, because there's already a threat on g7. Okay, so we go knight first. Uh, bishop later got to watch out for the pawn coming through and of course we got to watch out for the overload on f7 uh, Decided to defend with the knight which doesn't really work because there's a number of combos there uh, one being bishop takes Which we take check. so decide to move the king out in this spot. check we get checked again decide to move the king out of the way with the idea that if Check. Black, white does that. We have this. We kind of, kind of got it defended there. I mean, the real, Check. The real worry would be something like this. But uh, as played in the game, we got lucky. White decided to castle. Kinside castling. And then we just took. Uh, but the idea is counter pressure because people make mistakes, even national Check. masters. And then after backing down there. White decided to resign. In this game, the action takes place on move 13. Uh, same concept here. We're going to go ahead and take from this, or try to trade from this side. Uh, white takes. We're going to allow uh, White to take again. Check. The idea was initially, well, I guess the idea ended up being to play the knight out. Uh, we could have gone for that. Uh, like we did earlier, which was counter pressure. 
that may actually be stronger. Uh, decided instead to develop the knight because there's a lot of stuff we can do with the knight down the road if we remove the pen. So uh, white brings out the bishop. We've got our bishop developed. Now we're going to count. Kinside castling. Kinside castling. Okay, so now it's time to go on the attack. We push the pawn up. Uh, decide not to take there, but we get our knight going. And, of course, the idea was to threaten the bishop. White decides to defend. Now we go after the queen, because if you notice, a uh, couple moves, we brought the knight forward. So now the knight can defend the previous square, which is where we put the bishop, and that puts pressure on the queen. Okay? But white's got its position defended, so what do we do? Well, after the pawn takes, we go ahead and take with the knight. And the reason we do this is we're going to leave our knight hanging. The other knight, that is. The, the one on uh, d4. That's a trap. White falls for it. Why is that a trap? Because we have this thing called discovery. And if it's a check, the queen's not going to be able to move. So we check with the bishop. Check. Basically, white has like three moves with the king. It can't move the queen. We get the queen right there. And then white being 1900 decides to play it out, which is fine. Okay. We take there. Now we just take again. We're going to basically just trade off material there. We need to remove uh, the defender for the F2 square. So we're going to push the pawn there. We're going to give up our rook because it doesn't. we need to remove the other defender. This knight was defending F2, which is where we wanted to go. Check. We get the check. Now we gobble up some material. We've got a material advantage. We've got spacing. The important thing is we've got spacing for our ranged pieces. And then uh, we get to this point, and I believe uh, White decided to resign there. 